you're singing so good this morning. Just clap your hands to the worthy one. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are deserving of our praise. You are deserving of our glory and honor today, Jesus. Bless your wonderful name. Amen and amen. Are you glad to be in church this Easter? I mean, do you remember where we were this time last Easter? Can we give God a praise? Let me hear the monitor, please. Give him a great hand. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Turn to someone. Smile at them. Welcome them to church today. Would you do it? Tell them you look better than the last time I saw you. So good to have all of you here today. Welcome to Free Chapel. Let's give a warm welcome to all of our campuses that are joining us right now. Thank God for each and every one of you at every campus. We just love you and appreciate you so much. And of course, our online campus and online congregation and members, we just appreciate you all over the world. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, I want to say hello to the people who are outside right now. They're all out there in the amphitheater, and we've already had one amazing service this morning. And there they are. And uh, it's a beautiful crowd outside and inside. See, um, it's warmer in here, and that's because we let the tithers come in here and the non-tithers sit out there. Now that'll be a new rumor all over town. Sure have to pay for an indoor seat at that church. No, come, come first, come serve. Amen. Or something like that. Open your Bible. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 15. If you don't know it, 1 Corinthians 15 is the resurrection chapter. It, it, you should read it today before the sun goes down. If you're on a great devotional today, read 1 Corinthians 15. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 35. But someone will say, how are we, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Paul says, foolish one, what you sow is not, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And then he starts in verse 37, talking about a grain. Then he talks about all through here. Let's, let's just for the sake of summing it up, look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. The corruptible must put on incorruption, the mortal will put on immortality, for with corruption is sown in corruption, but is raised in incorruption, and this Mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Everybody read verse 55. O death, where is your sting? O hell, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you today about this amazing question that was asked when he said, how can someone be raised from the dead? He said there would be those who would question, how can the body be raised from the dead? I want to first start off telling you today something that you already know, but you don't want to think about it. We don't like to think about it. We put it off but people die. Sometimes people die in strange ways. I read about a woman by the name of Amelia Link, and she was standing on the street corner in New York City on her telephone talking to someone, and she, as she was standing there, a flower pot fell from eight stories up from an apartment building and hit her in the head and killed her. 
And they said the thing that knocked it off of the window pane that was eight stories up was a lightning bolt hit it and knocked it off and it killed her. And then there was this guy by the name of Carlos Bombas, true story. He was fishing in the Philippines and he opened his mouth to yawn. And I hope this happens to you this morning if you do that while I'm preaching. <laughs> but, 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 but he opened his mouth to yawn and a f- small fish jumped from the water into his mouth, got stuck in his throat. And this is sad. I don't know why you're laughing. And he choked to death before they could get that fish out of him. Can you believe that? You see, with every tick of the clock, someone dies somewhere around the world. One of those ticks has my name on it. One of those ticks has your name on it. If you're a teenager and you're on TikTok all the time, it's got your name on it too. We never know when our tick will come. We never know when it's our last day on earth. But I have great news for you. When death does come, it cannot keep you. It cannot hold you. It cannot kill you. Jesus has become the death of death. When Jesus died and rose again from the dead three days later, it was the day death died. And when I think about what the text said, that in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead will be raised. First Thessalonians said the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised first. And those of us who are alive, we will all have resurrection bodies. God will transform us in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Our bodies, if we're alive, there will be a group that will be alive, a generation that will be alive. And all of those who have died, all of our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, our sons, our daughters, people that we've buried, if they died in Christ, when the trumpet sounds, there will be something that will happen and our bodies instantly will be glorified. If you're alive, you'll get a new body. If you're dead, God will take that which has been decayed and restore it and the graves will burst open and we together will meet the Lord in the clouds when that trumpet sounds. You say, now, how in the world? How in the world? How are those people going to come out of the grave and how are we going up? Because the Bible put it like this. It said, if if the same, if the spirit that was in Christ Jesus, that same spirit is in you and it dwells in your mortal body for the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you and, and raised up Christ from the dead. It will listen to this also quicken your mortal body. It will quicken. If you've got Jesus, Holy Spirit, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit, you get a deposit of God inside of you. And when the trumpet sounds, it will quicken your mortal body. And it's just like the fact that when you have a magnet, there is something in it. Let's say you have a You have a mechanic shop and that mechanic goes in there and he works all day and he makes a mess. And if he's a good mechanic at the end of the day, he wants to clean up the mess and he sweeps it up and he gets all kinds of things in the dustpan. He gets all trash and sawdust and paper and scraps. And, but there's also some, 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 some washers and some bolts and some screws and some different metal that's very valuable that he can use. It just happen to drop it. But if he's smart, a good mechanic won't go through it and have to go through glass and hurt his, he'll get him a magnet because he knows that there's something in there that when he does that, suddenly all the bad stuff drops and that which is like that magnet goes up. That's exactly what's going to happen. You have the spirit dwelling in you. And when the trumpet sounds, Jesus' presence appearing in the clouds will become so magnetic that the graves will explode with resurrection power and we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. What a day. What a day that is going to be. We have a promise of a glorified, resurrected 
body. The resurrection is not just about Jesus' resurrection, but it's just as much about you and I being resurrected in the rapture or from the dead. You know, I, I heard about a little girl who was told by her mother, We're, we are, you know, we've got some bad news, darling. Great granny has passed away. She's gone to heaven. And so as they were driving over, they walked in to the funeral home and the little girl walked over and she saw her grandmother, her great grandmother there. And she looked around, she looked around and she said, so this is heaven. No, this is not heaven. This is the funeral home. I heard about a man by the name of Solomon Pease. True story. He lived in London, England, and he wanted to have some fun when he died. So he had this put on his tombstone beneath this sod and beneath these trees lies the body of Solomon Pease. But this ain't the peas. It's just the pod peas shelled out and went to God. This body is just the pod. And our spirit goes to be with God. The Bible said to be, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Our spirit instantly goes to be with the Lord. And our body, the pod, is left behind. This body one day will be resurrected. When, the, when Jesus comes back, he's going to bring the spirits of those who have died. And they will reconnect with their bodies. And God will raise the body up from the dead. Paul said to King Agrippa in Acts 26 and 8, why should it be thought incredible that God can raise the dead? I'm telling you, that's a, that's a profound thought. In Genesis chapter one and verse one, it said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All you got to do is get past the first sentence, the first thing in the Bible. And if you can believe that God can create the heavens and the earth, why would you have a problem? If he can do that out of nothing, he can do that out of our body. When it is something to work with, whatever's left behind, he can resurrect it. The first thing that Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, and I pointed it out to you, he said, it's like a grain. Your resurrected body will be like a grain. And he said, except a grain or a seed of a grain, go into the earth, it dies, it rots, it decays, and then it comes back to life because there's an element of life that germinates inside of that grain. And even though the, the, it dies and it decays, it's still got that thing germinating in it that says, I'm dead right now, it looks like, but there's life in me. And one day there's going to come something up that looks just like me. Grain's going to come up that looks just like me. Well, that's exactly what happens. Our body disintegrates. And let me just give you an illustration. Let's say, let's say that a man is born in Florida and he lives there all of his life. And let's say he heard, you know, that the country was in a war in Vietnam or somewhere and he goes to Vietnam and while he's over there, he, he has his leg blown off with a, with a landmine and then he comes back home and later he gets a job, let's say in Georgia and he cuts off a finger at that new job at the lumber mill and he's missing a leg. He, he's got get that in Vietnam. He's got a finger in Georgia. And then he moves to Africa. And I, I'm making it up so I can do whatever I want to do with this story. And, and he, moves to, he moves to Africa. And while he's there in Africa, he becomes a preacher and wins a lot of people. And then he dies. And they bury him under an apple tree in, in Africa. And while his body is underground, the roots of that apple tree begins to draw the nutrients and all that's left there. And it feeds and actually comes through those roots and produces apples. And the apples drop off and here comes a pig. And the pig eats the apples and leaves droppings all over the place in Africa. How, pastor, can the dead be raised? He's got a leg in Vietnam. He's got a finger in Georgia. He's got uh, the rest of him all over the place. Well, the body you have right now is not the body that you had 10 years ago. You're the same person you were when you were a baby. 
You're the same person you were when you were a baby, but you don't have the same body. Look at somebody and say, I was a beautiful baby. Tell them that. And tell them, look at me now. I was a beautiful baby, but look at me now. I'm preaching. But you know, you don't have the same body you had when you were a little baby. Do you know that you have 25 tree and blood cells that died the last 120 days and were reproduced and every cell in your body has, will die every 120 days. You are a walking resurrection and, and all you are is, is your particles of your body. They're not the same as they were 10 years ago. You're adding and leaving particles cons- constantly. When I was uh, young, younger, much younger, uh, my brother Richie and I used to travel and evangelize. And I'll never forget the first time that we went to Mississippi and went down in that area preaching. And I saw the mighty Mississippi River. It was an amazing thing. I remember reading Huck Finn and all that stuff. And I thought, that's the same river. That's that river. That's that one I've seen in the cowboy and Indian movies. I, I tell you, that's the mighty Mississippi River. And that was over 35 years ago that I first saw that river. But if I went back today, it's still the Mississippi River, but not one drop of water that was there 35 years ago when I first saw it is still there. Not one drop. And now it's still the mighty Mississippi, but nothing five years ago. And just like that, we are constantly changing. And here's what I want you to understand. We know that the, that the molecule structure of the body, the DNA, the stem cells, is what produces our arms, our hands, our legs, our, all, all that we have. We know now. We didn't know this. This is a technology that's been developed and understood since in our lifetime. But listen to Psalms 139 in verse 16. He said, Lord, your eyes did see my substance when I was yet unformed. In your book are all my body parts recorded and written there where, where there was none of them. You, you, you somehow had me reduced down to something to where you had every detail of my body in your books. And he's got a book in heaven. There was the DNA written in that book. What makes your body what it is, is the stem cell and the DNA. And when the resurrection comes, God will look in that book. He'll pull it out. He'll pull your DNA out. And I don't care if your legs in Vietnam and I don't care if your fingers in Georgia and I don't care where the rest of your body is. And I don't care if you decayed. God says, I'll punch in your card of your DNA and out will come Jensen. Hallelujah. Not somebody who looks, it will be me. Only I'll have a resurrected glorified body. Just like the grain decays and dies and life comes out of it. So will you. Then he says something else powerful in this chapter about our resurrected body. He says it will be individualized and unique to who you are. God makes copies. God God does not make copies, I should say. He makes originals. And when we get our resurrected bodies, we're not going to all be the same. He even draws a comparison in 1 Corinthians 15. And he says, as one star differs from another, one shines brighter than the other. He says, no two stars are alike. No two bodies are alike. No two fingerprints are alike. No two snowflakes are alike. God is a God of variety. And when we come out and go up to be with the Lord, he's not going to make us a bunch of robots that all look the same, act the same. We're going to be who we are. I will be me in the resurrection. You will be you in the resurrection. No two human beings have the same fingerprint. I heard about a little boy who got a fingerprint kit for Christmas. And he was playing with it. And his dad said, how do you like it, son? He said, I like it. It's all right. But the man lied that wrote the instructions. And he said, why is that, son? He said, well, he said that you know, nobody has more than one fingerprint, but he said, I know for a fact 
that dad, you and Santa Claus and somebody who keeps breaking into my piggy bank has the same <laughs> fingerprint. Your resurrected body will be uniquely you. Hallelujah. I'm glad God didn't make us all the same of every kindred and of every tongue and of every nation. God, God's going to have every nationality, every race in heaven. We're going to stand before the throne of God. We're going to work. We're going to travel. We're going to go all over the world and all over the We'll come back and rule and reign and it's going to be glorious. We're not going to float around on clouds with fat angels strumming harps. We're going to have the time of our life. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and we're going to have it going on with beautiful, resurrected, glorified bodies. Somebody shout amen. Notice what Paul says next. He says, not only that, not only will you be in individualized with uniqueness, but he says, I'm going to infuse your resurrected body with perfection. First Corinthians 15 said that this body will be sown in corruption, which means decay, but raised in incorruption. That it will be sown in dishonor, but raised in glory. It will be sown, meaning put in the ground, in a natural body, Paul calls it, but raised as a spiritual body. God says your resurrected body will be infused with perfection. I love that because right now, nobody in here has a perfected body. I'm glad you've been working out. I'm glad you got a trainer. I'm glad that you're doing push-ups and sit-ups. I'm speaking by faith. I, I'm glad that you, that you but, but I'm telling you, you don't have a perfected body. You don't have a perfected body. Do you know that uh, our IQ is, is, is something that the brain has gray matter. The brain of your up here, it's gray matter. And then there's a difference between the brain and the mind. The mind uses the brain to think. Your mind is to your brain what a pianist is to a piano. And you know, some people have a baby grand and some people have an accordion. But, 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 it's, but it's really up to who? These jokes are good today, I'm telling you. But, but, it, but it's really up, it's really up to, do, do you know we, we use just a tiny portion of our brain our whole life? In the resurrection, your mind will be fully activated. In the resurrection, all decay of the body will go away from dishonor to glory, the Bible said. God calls the state of our bodies, even the most fit person hearing me who's doing PX90 and working out every day and you're chiseled. The Bible said, compared to what Adam looked like when God made him before the fall, you are, your body is in dishonor. God wants us to have a glorious body. He said, from dishonor to glory, God is going to give us a glorious body. It'll never ache. It'll never hurt. It'll never have dark spots. I look in the mirror and I find another spot every day. It will never have any arthritis. It will never have any limitations. Hallelujah. What would you say today? Some, somebody said, well, I have a glorious body. No, you don't. And if you do, we'll just give it a little time and the four B's will attack you. Baldness, bifocals, budges and, bud, budges and bunions. Let me put it to you like this. Ladies, how many of you ladies have a diamond on your finger? Let me see your hand. If you're married or engaged, hold it up. Hold it up. Now, let me ask you a question. What's the difference between a diamond and a, a uh, lump of coal? And I know what you're thinking, size. <laughs> Both are made of carbon. The coal is carbon in humiliation. The diamond is carbon in glory. What about a caterpillar, an old ugly caterpillar? You see it, it's the same body, and then 
It comes out of that cocoon and it's a beautiful, gorgeous butterfly. The caterpillar is the creature in humiliation. The butterfly is the creature in all of its glory. In the same way, you and I right now, we are sown into the ground and we're walking around like a caterpillar. We're walking around like a, like a lump of, of coal. Action takes place. Suddenly, you will see perfection. It will be infused into our bodies. And we, you say, well, I don't know if I want the same body. You'll want the one that God has for you. I mean, if we could get, if we could put in God's computer, Adam, and cause him to spit out of the assembly line and walk across this stage in the amazing body he had and Eve had before sin ever entered the picture, you women would faint and you men would need prayer. Because you have never seen, I'm talking, I'm, I'm not up here playing games. I'm telling you one of these days in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to get a brand new body and it'll be the body that we will have. And I don't know what all that means. The Bible said while we're here, we have, a, we have the image of Adam and our body is of the earth earthy. Did you catch that in 1 Corinthians 15? He said, your body is of the earth earthy. But when we get our new body, it will be heavenly. And 1 John puts it like this. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we shall see him, boom, we shall be like him. Oh, hallelujah. If you got too much back here and not enough up here, all of that's going to get fixed real quick. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm going to look at you and you're going to know me. And I'm going to know you, Jackie. But I am going to notice some differences and you're going to notice some differences. I feel like running. Hallelujah. What about you outside? What about you at all the campuses? Can we shout, we have resurrection power coming into this body. One of these days, morning, noon, or night, we shall be changed. Lord, I'm telling you, when you understand that, the most brilliant person uses only two-fifths of one percent of their brain capacity. But imagine when we get that mind activated. Absolute perfection. If you had never seen a train, a railroad train, and there was a train wreck, and I took you down and showed you the train wreck, and you saw all that steel mangled together and you saw those cars stacked up on one another and you had never seen a train before and I said that's a train now would I be telling you the truth I technically it is a train but really it's a train wreck I see Dwayne standing back there now he's a man raise your hand Dwayne now is that a man not really that's a wreck but when we get our new glorified bodies, oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. From weakness to power, from dishonor to glory, from corruptible and decay to incorruption. We can walk through doors. We'll have glorified bodies. We'll be able to do and, and, and achieve things we can't even imagine. The body will be powerful. I'm almost done, but let me finish. In Luke chapter 24, Jesus rose from the dead and he said, behold, my hands and my feet, it is I myself. A spirit has not flesh and bone. And he, he said, touch me, handle me. He fellowship with them. He ate with them. He ate meals with them. He cooked meals for them. And they ate meals together for 40 days. He showed himself alive and walked the earth and had meals and talked with people. He was showing us what our resurrected body will be able to do. 
I close with this. But I want to read it right out of the scripture because it so blessed me this week. I want to read it one more time. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That sleep is reference to the dead. But we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, the trumpet will sound, verse 52, and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And then I want you to see the last part for he says, for then death will be swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, oh death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Look, there's two courses. There's two anthems in those, in those verses. Just leave them up a moment. Oh, death, where's your sting? You know who's going to sing that, that, that verse? Those who are alive when Jesus comes again. Because they're saying, the stinger never got me. Death, where's your sting? I never felt it. Just like Elijah got caught up in a fiery chariot and he never died. But then there's a second group, oh grave, where is your victory? That's the, that's the song of the dead, that we're in the grave. They'll say, grave, you had me, but look, my casket is empty and my gravesite is torn open and my tombstone is toppled over. And the living will say, death, where's your sting? We'll say this together, and the dead will say, grave, where is your victory? It's been swallowed up in victory. Heard about a little boy and little girl who were in the garden with her mother, and there was a bumblebee. You know those bumblebees, and, 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 and it landed on the little boy, and it stung him, and he screamed. And then that same bumblebee began to circle the little girl, the little sister, and she absolutely, as a little child would do, just went berserk in, in, in fear because it was buzzing and she knew how, how that brother had screamed when that bumblebee stung her. And so the mother came over and she grabbed the little girl. The little boy was, was there and she grabbed the little girl and tried to calm her down and said, it's okay, baby. Said, come here, let me show you something. Said, the stinger of that bumblebee can't sting you because your brother has the stinger. See it? And she took the stinger out of his flesh and she said, that bumblebee doesn't have a stinger anymore. All he can do is buzz. Do you understand that's what Jesus did for us? Our elder brother, Jesus Christ, took the stinger out of death for me. And he says to you and I, I took the stinger and old death, it has a buzz. It can frighten you. It can scare you when you get a report. And we've gone through a season of COVID and watched loved ones die and people have lost family members and mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And we've wept and we've cried. But really, all that has happened is we've seen the buzz. If they died in Christ, Jesus took the stinger and one day resurrection power to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They're presently with the Lord, but one day the trumpet is going to sound and they're coming up with resurrection power and so are you if you have faith in Jesus Christ. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise. I want you to know today that Calvary was Satan's biggest mistake because on the third day when the fog lifted and the stone was rolled away, he came out and he said, because I live, you're gonna get a resurrected body just like mine and you will live also. Eternal life is yours through Jesus Christ. He destroyed death. What a savior. What a miracle. What a joy to live for Jesus. What a relief from the fear of dying I feel this morning when I comprehend 1 Corinthians 15. Death, where's your stinger? 
grave, where's your victory? Jesus has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Somebody shout like you believe it. Somebody, somebody get happy over the fact you're going to have a new body. Woo! Let's get up on our feet wherever you are at every campus in the overflow outside. Just stand to your feet and clap your hands and for 15 seconds give His Majesty the Risen One the greatest praise and shout of victory that you can. Hallelujah! Oh, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Run and tell them, Mary. Run and tell them, Simon Peter. Jesus is alive. Every head bowed, every eye closed, wherever you are. I can't have an Easter service, especially after what we've been through and not give you a chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when you do, He promises you eternal life. He promises you a resurrected body. He promises you victory over death, hell, and the grave. Do you want it? Do you know that you have it? Are you sure you're saved? If the rapture takes place today, will you be left behind? Do you have enough of Jesus inside of you that can connect with the magnetic presence of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you don't have him in you, you're not going up when he comes again. But today he said, I stand at the door and I knock. Let me in. Let me in. Do you hear me, young man? Do you hear me, young lady? One of these days, it is appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. Where will you stand? I only will stand complete if my faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. I won't embarrass you. I won't humiliate you. But if you want that peace, if you want to know that you know that you know that when they put me in the grave, Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Pastor, would you pray for me? I don't know that, and I really want to know. Maybe you're backslid. Maybe you're far from God. Maybe you came today, and you don't even know why, but something's missing in your life. This is your moment. One of those tick-tock, tick-tock has your name on it. Be ready. Be ready for in an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. And it could be the rapture, it could be death, but you better be ready. Pastor, pray for me. I want to get right with God today. If that's you, boldly, wherever you're standing, raise your hand high and say, I want to get right with God today. Let me see your hand. Raise it high and unashamed. Raise it high and unashamed. Yes, yes, yes. Raise it high. Raise it high. There are others. Raise them high at every campus. Raise them high. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Raise them high. Raise them high. Everybody pray this prayer out loud at every campus. Let's go. Lord Jesus. I believe the Bible. I believe that you died on the cross and hell thought it had won the victory. But on the third day, you rose in a glorified body. And because you live, I have eternal life. Wash me in your blood. Fill me with your spirit and put in me what I need to be ready when you come or call. Say this, Jesus saved me, and now I am saved. Can you put your hands together and shout if you believe it? Woo! You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? Key of B flat. We're going to end with an old great hymn of the church. Because he lives. Come on, pick it up. I can face tomorrow. Pick it up, guys. Because he lives. Faster tempo. Come on. All fear is gone. Everybody sing it. Because I know, I know he holds the future. My life is worth a living. My life. Just one more time. You 
sound good. Lift him up. Oh, because he to have an illustrated sermon of everything I just preached. Water baptism is you go into the grave, the old you, and you come out of the grave, the water, the new you. And right here on this stage will be a big old tank and anybody who wants to get baptized, we can only do so many, but they're going to get baptized. I'm going to baptize people right here. Every campus is going to have tanks. We're going to baptize people. And we're going to have baptism tanks outside. And if you have never been baptized and you want to be baptized or you feel like you need to do it again, you, you, we're going to have the pool outside. We're going to have everything going. And we're going to baptize hundreds of people at all of our campuses. This will be our first baptism service in over a year year because of COVID. We're going to come back and give the devil a good black eye. Say amen, somebody. God bless you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Tell somebody, I see you in the future and you look a lot better than you do right now. You're going to have that glory body one of these days. God bless you. Be blessed everybody. Worship God in your giving online. Give. We've got an amazing gift that has been given. I've talked about it. I won't take time to do it today. I'll do it next week though. But give like never before because we have a matching fund miracle. That's what I'm calling it. I think about it every day and rejoice. And I'm telling you, you're rising to the occasion. We're seeing. Help us carry the gospel all over the world. Thank you so much. Be blessed, everybody. Wasn't that such a powerful message from Pastor Jensen on this amazing Easter Sunday morning? Again, we just want to thank you so much for joining us today. You could be anywhere else, but you chose to tune in live today. So thank you. We love you. And if you receive Jesus today, go ahead and text AMEN to 313131. We want to get you plugged in, want to get you connected, want to pray with you, want to just be there for you. So we are all in this together as one big family. You have our support. You have the support of Free Chapel backing you up and behind you. So go ahead and text AMEN to 313131 this morning if you receive Jesus Christ today. Yes, be sure you text. We want to reach out to you personally. But also, what a powerful word that was from Pastor. Something we just want to add to that is today is such a powerful day because since Jesus died and resurrected, we can know our stories never end in death. Though we may face death in certain situations and certain circumstances or Maybe you're just going through things in life that seem to be a little hopeless. You can know it doesn't end there because Jesus resurrected. We can know he resurrects dreams. He resurrects promises. He's so good. So you can have hope. You can have joy. And you can know that if it looks like death has taken place, honestly, you should be a little encouraged because that means resurrection is right on the other side of it. So we just want to encourage you with that today. This is such a special Sunday where we see Jesus rise in glory and we get to live in the fullness of that. So we just want to encourage you, have hope, have joy, no matter what life throws your way. No, it does not end in death. Peace, patience, (laughs) and all those good things. Know that you can have them too. Yeah. So if this message touched you today, if you, whether you already know about Jesus or if you just found out about Jesus today, we have something very special at Free Chapel and that's our Experience Israel trip. 
you can go to the Holy Land. You can yeah. go to the Promised Land with our group. You can register online. You can visit freechapel.org and learn all about the Experience Israel trip. That's taking place this year, at the end of this year in December. So December 1st through the 10th, we are going to Israel together. You want to make sure that you're registered for this trip. Yes. All of the information will be available online for you and you get to walk firsthand yeah. where Jesus yeah. was. Every place that he went to, we have a great schedule lined up for you yeah. and you get to just be there and know that Jesus walked in those steps yeah. too. It's going to be incredible. So you do not want to miss out. That's our Experience Israel trip, December 1st through the 10th. Yes, that's so awesome. Like you were saying, like not to only hear about where Jesus was, but to literally yeah. physically be there will be so awesome. So be sure you check that out. But also, we just want to thank you for tuning in. We want yes, to thank you for thank generously you. giving to this ministry. Thank it's your you support so that allows us to keep going and doing what we're doing and reaching all those souls. So yeah. just again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for thank tuning you. in. Thank you for your time. If you're a volunteer, whatever it looks like, we just want to thank you. You are so appreciated yeah. by this house, by pastor. And we just want you to know for sure that you are so, so loved, valued, and appreciated yes. by us here. We're all one big family, and we love you, and we yeah. see you, and yeah, we just love you guys so much. I could say <laughs> that do. so much, but we want you guys to know that's to be true. Yeah, we're so, so thankful for you, like Skylar said. Yeah. I mean, seriously, by you sewing in, you're doing so much for the kingdom, and I know that you guys are going to be blessed as well. Yes. We have so many amazing things taking place here at Free Chapel, but not even, not only just here at this location, but all yeah. over. You know, we have all sorts of organizations and yeah. outreaches that we're partnering with, and so know that it's going for so many amazing things and two yeah. great causes. Um, again, like she said, we love you guys. We're so thankful that you joined us today. It is Easter Sunday. The Lord has risen, yes, and like has. she said, we can walk out in freedom and power and joy and life. Yeah. So we are so thankful for you guys. I pray that you guys have an amazing day. Yes. I'll go ahead and just close this yeah. out in prayer. Yeah. And then you guys can enjoy your Sunday, whether that's lunch, dinner, brunch, whatever traditions yes. you have going on. <laughs> Hope that you can enjoy them. So God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for everybody who is joining us online. No matter where they are, they come from all over across the globe. God, we just thank you and we lift them up to you, Father. We thank you and pray that you touch them and touch their hearts and touch their lives. And we pray for miracles in their homes and wherever they're watching from God. And we just pray for breakthrough. We yeah. pray for resurrection power in whatever their situations may be. We thank you that you can experience freedom today in Jesus. And so we love you. We praise you. We give you all the Thanks glory today, Lord. God. We thank you for the life that you sacrificed so that we could live our lives. Yes. And so we just pray that you get all of the glory today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, enjoy See you guys day. next week. We love you guys.